News. The ESCOM Expo provides a platform for the learners to increase their awareness and knowledge of the wonders of science and also hopes to broaden their scientific horizons and encourage them to pursue careers in the science, technology, engineering and mathematics fields. Over 600 learners from around Johannesburg competed at Wits University with remarkable innovations in the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists reg uh, Johannesburg Regional Competition. The participants presented their hypotheses, research and conclusions to a team of discerning judges in the hope, of course, of earning a medal and to get the chance to take part in the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists International Science Fair, ISF, here in Johannesburg from the 3rd to the 6th of October. For more on this Expo story in our studio, we're very pleased to be joined by Mr. Parthi Chetty, who is the Executive Director at ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists. Mr. Chetty, what a pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a bit about your NGO. Our NGO started uh, 37 years ago, so we've got a long history. It was started by a very passionate teacher, Dr. Derek Gray. And it's on his legacy that we grew this organization from a small school in Pretoria to across the entire country, covering 35 regions in all nine provinces, mm -hmm. reaching about 5,000 schools and over 17,000 learners countrywide. Wow. So a small legacy has really gone a long way. Wow. How did ESCOM come on board? ESCOM has looked at the, the uh, importance that the Expo for Young Scientists was playing and the impact it was having. Mm -hmm. And we obviously were looking for funders. So ESCOM stepped up to say, look, we like what you're doing. You are serving a very valuable role Absolutely, in our education yeah. system. So they stepped up and provided funding for the past 19 years. And they gave us a mandate to say, here's more money. Yeah. Go and hire more staff and reach more schools because that is what we need in this country. Mm. Now let's talk about this Expo for Young Scientists. I mean, what does it entail exactly, Mr. Chetty? It entails a learner who, who is passionate about doing research in one of 24 categories. Now research is about developing a problem statement, testing it by doing some research analysis, mm -hmm. and then looking at from the results that I have, does it corroborate my hypothesis? Mm. Does it make a difference in my community? And is it a sound process that I've done? So we have scientific processes and we have the engineering processes and wow. the combination. And you don't have to be harbored you know, in, a, in a science lab with, with chemicals around you and stuff. Yeah. You can do research anywhere. Mm -hmm. And that is what we encourage our learners to do. Because mm. this is the future of our country. We have to invest in our learners. Mm. Mr. Chetty, this is a national thing. How do you identify those learners that are then uh, that finally form part of the Young Expo, uh, the Expo, the ESCOM Expo for Young Scientists? Actually, it's it, it's quite easy when the learners know about it, mm -hmm. because these are your motivated learners. Mm. We don't have to push them along. Once they know they they have a passion for science. They participate in Expo for up to five to six years. Once they get started, they never let go. Yeah. And the good thing is when they leave the school system, they are very well in tune with university mm. life. So currently, the failure rate at first year university is an average of 35%. My goodness. It's extremely high. That is high. Our learners know how to do research. So when they walk into university, they, they, they hit the ground running. Wow. And that is why all universities in the country in our country have a big role to play and mm. they invest in the expo. Mm. Mr. Chet, you've been hosting these events for some time now. Is it yielding any results though? Give us some success stories. We have lots of success <laughs> stories. Just to touch on uh, one of the most iconic uh, person that came out, uh, he participated in 2007, Sia Bulile. He's one of the 21 icons. He participated at Expo. Mm -hmm. He then represented South Africa at the Intel ISAF in the USA. He won gold and best of, best of category. Wow. He then won a Harvard scholarship. He then did some work in NASA. He now is doing some cutting edge research and spending time between South Africa and the US. Wow. And he still wants to invest in South Africa and that's the good thing about yeah, it. Yeah, that's the you good know, thing. You know, a lot of the learners, investing in our own. they come back. So, I mean, there's many of these Siabulilas out there. Mm. What the Expo does, it provides a platform to find these diamonds in the rough that get lost into the system. Mm. And these are the learners that say, I want to do research. They put their hand up and 
this is the platform that we provide. And this is the growing, the growing grounds for these budding young scientists of the future. Mm. Mr. Chetty, why do you think that these expos uh, will nurture the love of science and technology? I mean, these are the fields that are still, you know, less ventured into, in particular when it comes to the school curriculum, the current school curriculum. It doesn't allow children to expand yeah. on, on, on their love for technology should they have that as their driving force. Yeah. There's one thing about teenagers. Anything that's a challenge to them, they will want to conquer it. True. And if you tell them don't do something, they will do it. Absolutely. So this is, this is kind of the, low, the road less traveled. And it, it, you know, it kind of attracts them to say, what is it about the expo? What is it about research? Some of them will hop off, and, and we know that. But those that continue down this path continue all the way to success, mm. to postgraduate studies. They become researchers and scientists and engineers. Wow. And we have many of them in the system already that started back in 1980 mm -hmm. and are absolutely successful today. Wow. And just to give you a case study, um, Wits University, they kind of uh, poach the bright young learners. So the dean has a very brilliant idea. He walks around as a judge. And when he sees potential, he encourages that learner, you need to study at my institution. Imagine that. He's got six PhDs at his faculty in WITS. Now, that's brilliant. Wow. Now, multiply that by 23 universities across the country. Ooh. You've got a huge amount of bright learners getting up to PhD level. Mm. And mm. those are the innovators mm. that we need for the future. Absolutely, Mr. Chetty. Now, the senior schools category was also full of advanced ideas and experiences uh, this year. Do take us uh, through that very quickly. One of the brilliant things that came out is about What's important to learners? Now, you probably would have been in a situation. You go into a shopping mall, you know you're going to be there for five to six hours mm -hmm. on a moderate day, and your cell phone battery runs flat. Mm -hmm. Now, your charger is in the car. You can't plug it into a wall because you want to be mobile. Power bank? One, power banks do work sometimes, <laughs> but you still have to charge a power bank. That's they true. They do run flat. However, one bright learner realized they push a trolley for a few hours through that mall and use the energy generated by those wheels and have a cell phone charger on the trolley. What? So you just plug your cell phone in while you're walking through the mall, you're converting kinetic energy which is being generated by you oh my to word. charge your cell phone. Now, these are realistic things that learners experience. They don't go and Google stuff to see <laughs> what's happening in the US yeah. or in Japan. It's life things that they experience. Now, this is what may be missing our school system. You know, they, they cannot express themselves there. Yeah. So we provide that opportunity for them to say, right, take your idea. And that can become a marketable idea. Absolutely. Let's now talk about the fact you, you, you were telling me that you, you, you've just finished with the regional competition. You're now going for the internationals. Do tell us how that's going to unfold. And also briefly take us through the fair that you'll be hosting in October. <laughs> sure, thanks. <laughs> We've finished the 35 regional expo. So... The brightest kids from all 35 regions. That's come all over the country. All over the country. Okay. Come through to uh, Birchwood, where we host the International Science Fair. It's international because we are the only science fair on the continent that hosts us. We've got countries from West Africa. We've got Ghana and Nigeria coming through. Mm -hmm. East Africa, we've got Kenya and Tanzania coming through. And we've got the whole of the SADC region, wow. Namibia, Lesotho, Swaziland, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, all of them come through. So we had to step up and play this role because nobody else is doing it. Mm. So at Birchwood in the first week of October, we're going to see some of the brightest kids, not only in the country, but from Africa mm. Mm. coming through. Mm. And they will be judged by industry uh, experts, <laughs> university lecturers, you know, yeah. and they will be awarded according to their projects. Absolutely. Now, you said you, you what do they win? What is the price? They, we heard that uh, these ones at the regional <laughs> uh, 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 segments, they get uh, to get some medals and, of yeah, course, some, yeah. some sort of recognition and potential to get through to varsity. I mean, there's all sorts of opportunities that being part of this project actually opens up, Mr. We, we open a lot of doors. Yeah. Now, a lot of partners have seen the value of this. Universities step up and you can win a full university scholarship, scholarship. to pay for your studies. Mm -hmm. Private mm -hmm. sector step up to say, right, here's a laptop computer that you can use to further your research. Your research. Uh, we've also got uh, Siemens that have come on board in a big way. Last year, they gave away a scholarship and this year as well to go and study engineering in Germany worth 
over a million rand. My goodness. So you can study overseas, you work at their sites, and you must come back to South Africa. That's part of the deal. Then schools are winning science kits. They're winning laptop computers, data projectors, a whole host of opportunities open up. Mm-hmm. But the important thing is we support these learners to continue in the field of research. Absolutely. Wow, this is such a great initiative, Mr. Chetty. Where can people get more details about this? And also talk to us about when you're going to start with the next round of, of the regional phase. Sure. Um, all the information is available on our uh, website. Mm-hmm. It's uh, exposcience.co.za. Yeah. We also have a Facebook page, a Twitter account, Instagram. Everything is on okay. our website. Mm-hmm. The next round of regional expos actually start in July 2018. However, the work that the learners have to do starts in December this year. Mm. So during their school holidays, they start their research. Mr. Chachi, does this mean it's only pupils that are in, in studying mathematics and science, particularly in phys- physics in this stage? No, it's open to all learners. Okay. One of the most successful projects we've seen was about social science. A learner played music in a factory what? to see how it influences productivity. And she was quite right. A specific type of music, which was rock music, stimulates certain, stimulated yeah. productivity. So she didn't need a lab. She just needed music and the <sighs> idea to say, does music play a role in this? And she was brilliant. She even won at Intel. She won $40,000 scholarship. Wow. Cash. <laughs> Mr. Chetty, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, of course, keep up uh, the good work there. That was Mr. Pathe Chetty, the executive director of the ESCOM uh, Expo for Young Scientists, talking to us about, of course, uh, that uh, Expo for Young Scientists. It seems to be interesting. Go and check out the the website uh, for all the relevant details. They will be hosting a fair in October out in Birchwood.